Hello and welcome to another episode of What's Up, Prof? Martin, you must stop doing this now. Then what do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, but uh, I guess you can't stop the train, eh? It's uh, got full steam now? This, this is a runaway train at uh, this stage. Uh, there was a lecture like that the other, way, other day. But that was a s number two. That was number two, yeah. Still waiting number, for number one. Number one is not there. Yet, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's open with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us the energy to have come this far, not missing one episode. Gee, we need you to guide us in this one again with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So Martin, we're going to talk about a time of trouble up ahead. Are we on the brink? Martin, this sounds like a, a topic that is a recurring topic. But sooner or later, it must reach a culmination point. <laughs> Definitely. And it's not going to be a nice culmination point. No, but it is to be expected. Well, you know, the topic of the abomination of desolation that is standing in the holy place, is one that is very relevant for the time in which we are living. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's look at some of the issues that are you know, coming to fruition. It's very important that we understand that Babylon has three components, as we discussed in one of the lectures that we had recently. And one of them is the false prophet that aligns himself again with Babylon. And that is rather sad because it costs a lot of blood and a lot of energy mm. and a lot of study to bring about the Reformation. And the Reformation is dying. In yes. fact, it has already been declared dead mm -hmm. by some. Well, the Reformation can never be dead but it can be reduced to a remnant. Well, September the 25th, 2015, that was the year when the Pope visited the United States. It's interesting that all these things happen always in September, right? That's a month that needs to be watched, right? It's, it's, when I was putting the slides in, I, it occurred to me, yeah, it's interesting, everything happening in September. Yes, well, Christianity Today reported then from Antichrist to Brother in Christ, how Protestant pastors view the Pope. And that's a very true statement. And how can they view the Pope on the basis of an appearance? You know, these people all practice Jesuit theater, Hollywood. They're all actors. Mm -hmm. Many of the Popes were actually physically actors, and they all study these things, especially if they are involved with Jesuit institutions. Mm. So you have to base it on doctrine, on what they believe, and not on, now does he have a pleasant smile or not? Mm. And you have a nice uh, talk. Yes, or a nice white robe on. Mm. So how did that happen? More than half of evangelical pastors say Pope Francis is their brother in Christ. That means more than half don't know that Christ doesn't exist in their doctrine as the one who paid the price for you. That's true. If you take this in the concept of the desolation of the sanctuary, then that you cannot say he's a brother in Christ. You cannot. He's not a brother in Christ. No, he's the Antichrist yeah. because he teaches another gospel. And uh, if anyone comes, says Paul, and preaches another Christ or another gospel, then have nothing to do with him. Simple as that. You cannot even negotiate with him because how can you negotiate between nothing and something? Yeah, that's true. More than one-third say they value the Pope's view on theology. That is a horrendous figure. They should all be horrified. They mustn't call themselves Protestant. They must then rather become Catholic. Then they must become like Cardinal Newman and book a suite at the Vatican. <laughs> now, again, let me reiterate, we're not against Catholics. It's against the theology that negates the ministry of Jesus Christ. 
In fact, it negates his very deity. And that's important because, we, again, like you said, we're not against people no. and persons. It is against the system and the doctrines. Yes. And I have no, no animosity towards them, but I have great animosity towards their doctrine. Yeah. Because it's the opposite of the Bible. And because I was trapped in it. You, what a relief to find the truth. You know, if you don't study the inner workings or doctrines of the denomination you're in, how will you know what it actually stands for? In a, in a war situation, if there's going to be a war, do you study the machinations of the enemy? Well, you have to. You have to, otherwise you're going to run into trouble, right? So 3 and 10 say he has improved their view of the Catholic Church. Those are amongst the findings of a new study of a thousand Protestant senior pastors released this week from Nashville-based Lifeway Research. Well, Nashville is another one of those interesting towns, but let's not go there. Overall, the survey found that many Protestant pastors have taken a liking to Pope Francis. Nearly four in ten say the Pope known for his humility and concern for the poor, has had a positive impact on their opinions of the Catholic Church. Almost two-thirds view Pope Francis as genuine Christian and brother in Christ. Two-thirds. In other words, they have not read table talk. <laughs> and if you take it back to the 60s with Vatican II, I wonder how many what the ratio of the Protestants accepting yeah. the Catholic Church then would have been. They have forgotten entirely what the Protestant Reformation mm. was about. They haven't read Chiniki's book, 50 Years in the Church of Rome. They haven't read Vatican Assassins. Mm. They haven't read any of those things. They haven't read Romanism and the Reformation by Grattan Guinness, the, the Church of England view, before the Oxford Movement. I haven't read any of it. And also, if you take our spirit of prophecy quotes on Rome never changes. So you cannot th look at him and think, oh, but all those atrocities of those days will not happen again. It's impossible for him to change without denying infallibility. Mm. Impossible. 2022, the National Catholic Register, evangelicals are becoming more open to the Catholic Church. It's a trend. Oh, yeah. Remember that video that we showed, yeah, I think two years ago or longer, where that um, Smith, I can't remember his name. That's your name. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, but that pastor, he prayed and he said, I believe that the Catholic Church and the Protestant Church are coming together today. And then we also showed Lou Engel. Yes. They were kissing the feet of the evangelical oh. Catholics. Unbelievable. <sighs> so let's see what they have to say. One cause is the change in generations. That is true. Mm. On the faculty and amongst the students, the newer, younger ones just don't care much about the differences because they don't know history. And because it's been the goal of the Jesuits to get to this. And they don't know the doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church. I grew up a Catholic. I never understood their doctrines mm -hmm. Until I saw the opposite in the Word of God. All right, so you can still find a good bit of anti Catholic prejudice, but it's not partisan. It doesn't include the feeling that the Catholic Church is the enemy that must be vanquished to protect the pure gospel of Luther, Calvin, and Cranmer. Let's add Latimer and Ridley and Melanchthon and John Knox and Wesley and uh, you name yeah. them. Another cause is evangelicals' greater experience of Catholic teachers and writing, writers. They're swallowing Catholic doctrine and they've infiltrated. Thank you for finishing that sentence because I was at the loss of words <laughs> there for a moment. 
some of the faculty had Catholic mentors, and they're not going to say that someone to whom they owe so much was a consort of the whore of Babylon. Martin, this is Catholics' writing. They know exactly what Protestantism used to believe, mm -hmm. and they're mocking it. Exactly. It, it's, it's a slap in the face. This is desecrating everything, making it desolate that Jesus put down. There was an ecumenical movement at which some that believed in the great controversy were present. And the Catholic priest got up and said, do you still believe, according to that book, The Great Controversy, that the Church of Rome is the whore of Babylon? Mm. And the representative who knew about The Great Controversy spluttered and splattered and didn't know what to say and afterwards lamented the fact that we had such a horrible view. <laughs> oh. And I thought to myself, what he could have done, it was such a beautiful opportunity. There was a situation where the entire Protestant and Catholic world were in this setting. And he could have just said to them, do you still believe that? Mm. And then mention the doctrines of Rome one after the other. And if he affirms them, then say, you have answered your own question. Thank you. That would have had a great impact, don't you think? Definitely. That would have made the type of impact that the reformers did when they were standing before prelates. And kings and, and queens. Now, there can be two reasons why he didn't do it like that. The one is he was either indoctrinated and caught up in the whole thing, or the other thing is he could have been part of it. He could have been part of it. Either ignorance or apostasy, one of the two. So many of the students have had similar friendships or a Catholic writer who has meant a lot to them. Some have taken advantage of Catholic retreats or spiritual direction. Yes, yeah, some of the pastors who are sitting in ecumenical councils love the spiritual retreats and the Jesuit retreats, getting something from the church their own tradition doesn't offer them. Yes. In other words, a gospel that negates Christ but uses spiritual formation, experiential religion induced through hypnosis. Mm. And they could have had another one here being indoctrinated by Jesuit theater. Correct, yes. A third cause is how many have found in Catholic teaching something they couldn't find in evangelicalism. In my experience, many involved in culture and politics found themselves turning to Catholic social teachings. Martin, is that the Bible? No. Not at all. So are they, are they busy with the gospel or are they busy with social issues? That's the thing. Like we've shown that video a few times of the Pope where he also said we have to get together in social. So the Jew and Christian or the Muslim, everybody can get together handing out food. That is not religion. It is a consequence of religion. Yeah. But it is not religion. I cannot sit and worship with someone who denies the divinity of Christ or the messiahship of Christ, but I can play a game of whatever with him and have a meal together yeah. with him, but worship with him, never. No. It's impossible. We have different gods. Pro-life activists, for example, found a more holistic vision of the issue in its relationship to all the other issues with a wiser way of understanding what they're doing and why. Those who'd begun the question free market orthodoxy found deeper understanding of what economic freedom meant. According to my understanding, their economic freedom is bondage. Yes, <laughs> you will own nothing. And you'll be happy. When and you'll be quiet. <laughs> We're going back to the Middle Ages and the church will decide who owns something and who does not. And the church will draw the map. This belongs ah. to Spain. This belongs to Portugal. This belongs to me. And this belongs to me. 
here's one for you and five for me. Yeah. And, uh, and so we carry on. Yes, thank you very much. How far is this going? September the 5th, 2022, Irish teacher jailed after refusing to use transgender pronouns. I will not give up my Christian beliefs. This is interesting, Martin. It's actually scary also. Enoch Burke, a Christian and a teacher at Wilson's Hospital Secondary School in Multifarnham Co. Westmeath, which is a Church of Ireland school, was arrested on September 5 for contempt of court in a case which had emerged from his refusal to call a boy a girl in the classroom. My religious beliefs are not misconduct. They are not gross misconduct, he told the court. They never will be. They are dear to me. I will never deny them and never betray them and I will never bow to an order that would require me to do so. It is just not possible for me to do that. Now, he has a point. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much knowledge he has on the plan of salvation and the gospel and the teachings of Rome, etc., etc. But on this point, he has a point. He added that upholding the biological reality of male and female could not lead to a charge of gross misconduct, and such a charge was the only thing which could lead to a suspension. He was sentenced to serve an unspecified jail term. It's amazing. I can, it, it, you almost think this is not true. This is like the Inquisition. Exactly. Hmm? Until you recant. And you will sit in that tower... Until you light a candle and tell us that you have recanted. Then you can come out of jail. Okay. To last until he purges his contempt or until further order of the court. Judge Michael Quinn stated that he was sentencing Burke to prison based only on his contempt of court, not on his beliefs. Well, I think that judge is talking a load of nonsense. Exactly. That's just twisting it to suit the court. All right, so this is the Inquisition using the court systems. And this might be a precursor of coming to you, your court soon. Yes. Now, you know, of course, that court is a game. Mm. You play on a tennis court. <laughs> mm. And uh, you serve. <laughs> there are all kinds of things that are interesting in the English language. Uh, let's not go into those no, details, or else we'll be... Sideline. I just want to mention one more. You watch a channel on television. <laughs> yes. Channeling. So, yeah. And you bring the ship to a berth. Mm, and it's programmed. But, <laughs> don't go there. It's, this is another thing. Here's another article from September the 15th, 2022. Jewish philosopher... The only force strong enough to stop woke neo-Marxism is Christianity. Amazing. And we've had a couple of people say in the past that uh, we need Christian values mm -hmm. and they come from Jewish people that are saying these. So the integration yeah. has become so absolute that uh, the sanctuary really has been trodden underfoot. Definitely. An Israeli philosopher has called on conservatives in the U.S. to appropriate the only force that is capable of stopping the newly emerged totalitarian woke neo-Marxism, and that is biblical Christianity. Yet this will require repentance at personal, communal, and national levels. Uh, this is an appeal to bring about what Revelation says will happen in the United States. Yes. That's why we've shown it in the previous. This is aging ever so slightly. Oh, actually, it's not aging anymore. No. It's, it's starting it, to pick it's up. It's pushing. It's pushing. So an Orthodox Jew who resides in Jerusalem, has a knee, is chairman of the Edmund Burke Foundation, is responsible for the NatCon, which has come under fire in the past for its tacit approval of homosexuality and same-sex marriage. What God needs us to do is our part, and our part is to repent. 
And the first part of repentance is that Christians, Catholics, Protestants, Orthodox, Orthodox Jews cannot continue to sit on the sidelines and allow the country to continue in the direction that it's going, he explains. And Christians in general must have the courage to publicly affirm this was a Christian nation, historically and according to its laws, and it's going to be a Christian nation again. Is that an image to the beast? Definitely. It's going to be a biblical nation. Is that prophecy? Yes. So there has to be biblical laws. Did uh, we have a program showing what mm -hmm. they were saying and what Jonathan Kahn was saying and all of these things? The Great Commission means that if you are a Christian, you are axiomatically a Christian nationalist, he concludes. Oh, I thought the Pope said that was a swear word. And, but he says it's okay because Catholics and Christians and Orthodox can stand together. We are in the great pendulum swing movement. Definitely. From absolute liberalism to absolute draconianism. Under the garb of biblical Christianity. You are quite right, Martin. So, this clash between conservatism and liberalism is going to culminate in a religious situation. And it can possibly lead to a civil war. Yes, even if it remains on the ideological level. If the church was silent 20 years ago, well, that was one thing. But to say today that, well, I don't want to be political, how can you not be political? William Wilberforce, about whom I've written and I mentioned in the book along with Bonhoeffer, he was dealing with the slavery issue and the slave trade. He knew it was satanic and he was political in saying, we've got to do what we can because we're Christians. And when people say, but you're being political, he would say, no, I'm simply doing what God commands me to do, to be a voice for the voiceless. The African slaves don't have a voice. If I don't speak, God will judge me. If I don't speak for the unborn today, God will judge me. Eric, what specifically then do Christians need to do? Do we need to attend school board meetings, run for office? I mean, beyond just speaking up, what should we do? Well, we need to do everything. In other words, I think that if, if when we talk about the church, we're talking about multiplied millions of Americans uh, who each has a different calling. So we just have to ask God, Lord, what would you have me to do? But do something. We had pulpits uh, on fire uh, before the revolution advocating against tyranny. They weren't afraid to be political. So he says it must become political. And it seems the church leaders agree with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get an image of the beast, even if it takes a civil war. So even in 2021, in December, ex-army generals fear insurrection or civil war in 2024. That's the next election. Mm. Martin, it's really building. It's really building. I, I mean, look at the um, clips that we've looked at previously. Yes. So three retired U.S. Army generals have warned of insurrection or possibly even civil war if the results of the 2024 presidential election are not accepted by sections of the military. Hmm. Well, we don't have to know who they all are. They warned of the potential of total breakdown of the chain of command along partisan lines and the risk of a shadow government led by a losing candidate who refuses to concede defeat, directly referencing former President Donald Trump. In short, we are chilled to our bones at the thought of a coup succeeding next time. And uh, ideological battle lines are definitely being drawn. I mean, if you just look at everything, uh, the FBI raid and this... Talk of civil war by the media, brainwashing everybody already for this. And then we've got that statement from the spirit of prophecy. Yes. Mm. Well, here we have uh, a clip from EWTN, which is a Catholic news agency. And let's see what they are discussing with their Protestant colleagues. 
Joining us now from Rome is David Hathaway, a Protestant pastor and president of the Eurovision Mission to Europe. After the Russian invasion of Ukraine in 2014, I was able to call all the Christian denominations together. And, and that's a miracle because I had Catholic, I had Orthodox, I had all the Evangelicals, the Pentecostal, the Charismatic, every single denomination. And I asked them one question. I said, look, we can work together in prayer if we forget all religious doctrines and if you will accept only two things. One, the only authority in the church is the Bible. And secondly, the only salvation is in the name of Jesus. They all agreed. And for six years, we had prayer meetings with 10,000 people. And the interesting thing is that the people who were praying, leading the prayers, were the heads of every single denomination on the platform. So, Martin, if you set aside the doctrine, then there's no problem. And that's what we've been saying all along. There has to be a compromise. There has to be a compromise. But uh, what about the Bible that says, take heed of the doctrine? That's a problem, right? It is. So the compromise is only possible on the basis of ignoring any doctrine that is contrary to this union. And now you've also got the problem, all the denominations, the Catholics and all of them coming together, and he said you must acknowledge that the Bible is the standard. But he didn't say which Bible. Yes, and do they still know their Bible? Or have they become confused by swallowing Jesuitical counter-reformation theology, like futurism? Exactly. For instance, if you have the Douay Rhymes Bible and I say, okay, that's perfect, I'll go according to that one. You've got then Mary, big, then yeah. Mary crushes the head. Yeah, you've got a big problem. Yeah. So you can go ahead, but you don't have the same Jesus or the same Bible. Correct. So, Martin, the pendulum is going to swing, as we saw, back to a religious viewpoint, and politics is going to become evolved, and nationalism, Christian nationalism, will again take center stage. That's what it seems like. The denominations will all be together by discarding any doctrine that separates them, and therefore uniting on points that they have in common. Mm. And that would be Sunday and spiritualism, namely the immortality of the soul. They have those doctrines in common. Mm. So if somebody is talking to a long-lost grandfather or to Eleanor Roosevelt or anyone else, then uh, that's acceptable. It's fine. Because the, the dead know everything even though the Bible says they know nothing. See, you see, in that situation, even the Indian that talks to the forefathers is also okay. Yes. Now, this entire thing, what, what does the Catholic do? Doesn't he talk to the forefathers exactly. when he worships uh, at the feet of the saints? So the very events in Italy now, for example, are, are fascinating. And it's interesting how the left reacts to what is happening in Italy. Now, on the one hand, one is inclined to say, well, at last they're coming to their senses. But this is so dangerous because if you know biblical prophecy, then you know Christian values that are based on the exclusion of right doctrines mm -hmm. are more dangerous than liberalism. Exactly, because there will be persecution from those Christians. And why is it more dangerous? Because it's harder to recognize the error. Definitely. So here's a clip of the new leader in Italy of what she said in the past and what she's saying in the present. Perché tutto quello che ci definisce in questo tempo è un nemico. Per chi vorrebbe che non avessimo più un'identità e che fossero che fossimo solamente 
schiavi, consumatori perfetti. E allora è sotto attacco l'identità nazionale, è sotto attacco l'identità religiosa, è sotto attacco l'identità di genere, è sotto attacco l'identità familiare. Non devo potermi definire italiana, cristiana, donna, madre, no. Io devo essere cittadino X, genere X, genitore 1, genitore 2, devo essere un numero. Perché quando sarò solamente un numero, quando non avrò più un'identità, quando non avrò più radici, beh, allora sarò lo schiavo perfetto in balia della grande speculazione finanziaria. Il consumatore perfetto. Fuochi verranno attizzati per dimostrare che 2 più 2 fa 4. Spade verranno sguainate per dimostrare che le foglie sono verdi in estate. Quel tempo è arrivato, signori. Siamo pronti. Grazie. Everything we stand for is under attack. Our individual freedom is under attack. Our rights are under attack. The sovereignty of our nation is under attack. The prosperity and well-being of our families is under attack. The education of our children is under attack. In front of this, people understand that in this age, the only way of being rebels is to preserve what we are. The only way of being rebels is to be conservatives. Only a few months ago, European Union bureaucrats wrote a document hundreds of pages long telling us that in order to be inclusive, we had to exclude all references to Christmas. Jesus, Mary, and all Christian names were to be removed from all official communication. Will we surrender in front of this? No, we will not. We will fight it. We will fight it standing tall. Well, that was a rousing speech. And there are many in the United States that believe the same. Yes. And there are many on the left that are horrified Horr that something like this could happen. So let's listen to the counter discussions that exist. To start today by talking about a politician on the right who we should all be worried about, who's on the rise today, a politician who has brushed off accusations of fascism. What separates us from, let's say, Italy, who elected a, a fascist? She is from fascist roots. A far-right political party whose roots go back to post-World War II neo-fascist. A party that has its roots in Italian fascism. They said it could never happen again. 100 years ago, Mussolini marching on Rome, plunging the country into two decades of dictatorship, an alliance with Hitler, and a second world war. Today, the fascist party is gone, but many say these are their political heirs, the brothers of Italy. Once on the fringes, they've ballooned into the biggest party in the country. Now their leader, Giorgia Maloney, is poised to head the most hard-right government since Il Duce. The 45-year-old firebrand insists she's no fascist, just a proud conservative and nationalist, comfortable, nevertheless, with some of the hallmarks of Italian fascism, like this motto. God, fatherland, and family. By the way, Martin, they have just demonstrated that they don't have a clue as to what fascism really is, right? Correct. They don't know the definitions. And uh, faith, fatherland, and family has got nothing to do with fascism. Fascism is government and industry and partnership for community. And that is exactly what the world in the liberal forums yeah. is practicing today. And even if they swing to the conservative forums, they're still practicing it. So the world is fascist at the moment but they are branding fascism as something totally yeah. different. They are being led by the nose. And remember, a while back, they compared Trump with Mussolini. Yes. So now they compare her also with Mussolini. So everything, <laughs> it's amazing how the left uh, um, is portraying the right as this fascist, <laughs> and they got the definition totally wrong. Yes, so they are denigrating fascism by introducing it. <laughs> wow. Now, how far is this conservatism going? Is it just Italy or is it a wave? Let's listen to this man who had uh, a meeting in Australia 
and came up with the same sort of battle. So let's talk about whether the right, whether they're dying out. I mean, what is happening here? Because, no, look at Italy. Georgia Maloney is going to become the Italian Prime Minister. Look at Sweden two weeks ago. That country ruled by Social Democrats since 1945 until now. There's going to be a Conservative majority leading Sweden. Actually, all over the world, you know, we are seeing a move against globalism. Because what's globalism done? It's made the rich richer and disadvantaged absolutely everybody else. But somehow, somehow in our countries, we get people who masquerade at election time as being conservatives, don't have the courage to stand up and fight for our values. They're desperate for leadership in Australia, and they don't see where it's coming from. But also they feel, and quite rightly so, that it's an assault on all fronts, that what was status quo yesterday mm -hmm. is far right today. Well, basically the point that he is making is that this wave is beginning to flow not only over one country, but numerous countries, yeah. right? Pendulum swing. Pendulum swing. Now, you need another few things to happen so that you can have the pendulum swing. A good depression uh, might just facilitate things. Here's Asia Markets, September 27, 2022. New Great Depression likely in 2023. Life as we know it is about to change dramatically as the world is plunged into a far-reaching economic depression. That's the view of veteran analyst Francis Hunt, who believes central bank overreach and global debt will create an environment the world has never seen before. Unlike the Great Depression of the 1930s, this will be a full-scale, globalized depression, Hunt told Asia Markets. It's pretty dystopian message. We're seeing it across all charts. It's going to be brutal on any form of leverage and it's going to be an impoverishing event generally for the middle classes. We've said all along that the model that they want is a return to the model of the Middle Ages where you had the elites mm -hmm. and you had the church and then you had the serfs. And that is where we are heading. The middle class has to go, and the way you do that is you implode the markets. Oh. This is Epoch Times also. Very recent, Morgan Stanley warns of something worse than a normal recession. So chief U.S. equity strategist Michael Wilson said that he's convinced the corporate earnings recession is coming and that it could be worse than a normal recession. We think it's unavoidable to avoid an earnings recession, and that's what matters for stocks, Williams said, with his remarks coming on the same day that the so-called Wall Street fear gauge soared to its highest level since mid-June when U.S. equities last hit a bear market bottom. So basically, the world is being told we're heading for a time of trouble. That's it. Like the previous article actually stated it like that. Now we've got to add some war back into the mix and yeah. some reactions and some economic strategies linked to war strategies. And then you've got all these problems. You know, you, you've just mentioned the financial system crashing. Going back to the dark ages. Well, we're literally going back to dark <laughs> With no electricity so, or energy. Somebody's going to switch the lights off. It looks like it. Somebody made a joke and said they met the Prince of Darkness and they thought he was the CEO of the electric company. <laughs> 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 so, Mail Online. Ukraine accuses Russia of Nord Stream terror attack as gas leaks from sabotaged pipelines sent vast rings of churning bubbles up to 3,000 feet wide to Baltic Sea service following an undersea explosions. And here is the picture of what is happening. So a military statement claimed that the largest leak is spreading bubbles a good kilometer 
in diameter. The smallest is creating a circle about 200 meters in diameter, while the head of Denmark's energy agency said it could take up to a week for gas to stop draining into the sea. So the sea surface is full of methane, which means there's an increased risk of explosions in the, sea, in the area. And he added that ships could lose buoyancy if they entered the affected region. The unsettling incident comes as Sweden's National Seismology Center announced that their equipment registered a powerful undersea blast in the region yesterday. It said one explosion was equivalent to a magnitude 2.3 earthquake. So they're blowing up the pipelines. Mm. Well. well, let's see. European gas prices rose on the news of the leaks with the benchmark October Dutch price up almost 10% on Tuesday. Prices are still below this year's stratospheric peaks, but remain more than 200% higher than in early September 2021. So, Martin, if they sabotage those pipelines, then the gas situation in Europe will look pretty bleak. Definitely, because I don't think it's going to take a week to repair this. And you're entering winter. Now, it's an interesting blame game they're playing. Yeah, that is where it's getting really interesting. Yeah, Ukraine is accusing Russia. Okay. Ukraine is accusing Russia, and Russia is accusing the West. Well, does it make s You know what? If it's a double blind, then I can see Russia doing it. Maybe it's planned. You see. But if it's not, why would they? If it's a... If it's, a it will, it's no economic privilege for them to blow up their own pipelines. Well, let's have a look. Mm. What did Biden say some time ago on the issue? If Russia invades, uh, that means tanks or troops crossing the, uh, the, the border of Ukraine uh, again, then uh, there, will be, uh, we, there will be no longer a Nord Stream 2. We, we will bring an end to it. What do, what, how, will you, how will you do that exactly since the project and control of the project is within Germany's control? We will, uh, I promise you, we'll be able to do it. With regard to Nord Stream 2, uh, we continue to have uh, very strong and clear conversations uh, with our German allies, and I want to be clear with you today. If Russia invades Ukraine, one way or another, Nord Stream 2 will not move forward. Uh, as you all know, these pipelines weren't pumping gas into Europe at this time. Uh, NS2 was never operational, as you guys know. NS1 has not been operational for weeks because uh, Putin has weaponized uh, energy, and we have said this many times before. This just drives home the importance of our efforts to work together to get alternative gas uh, supplies to Europe and to support efforts to reduce gas uh, consumption and accelerate true energy in Dependence by moving to clean energy uh, economy. Is there a possibility that they could sabotage their own livelihood for the sake of an agenda, Martin? I think so, because the end justifies the means. Ah. Now there's a problem here. Don't stop talking like a Jesuit. <laughs> <laughs> there's one thing that's bothering me. She says that that gas pipe has been turned off. Now, where's the bubbles coming from? Well, it must be coming from what's left in the pipe, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it can only take a little while for st still to come out, but now it's blown up, it seems. Well, let's just go back in history to The Economist in 2019. And they had this interesting collage over here of what was going to happen in the future, the rise of China, for example. Uh, they had, you know, this image over here that comes back all the way from Leonardo da Vinci. He has an interesting plant in his hand over here, which we won't go into details. He has uh, DNA on his, on his forearm and all of these interesting things. They even had the South African election down here yeah. in it. And they had Putin over here and closely associated with him. You had the Riders of the Apocalypse. 
So in 2019, were they planning some form of apocalypse? This is pre-pandemic. Yes. I, we actually remember we had an episode where we discussed this, this, even the phone with the QR code on and all of this. Yes, we discussed that. But we didn't know we, uh, more about the Putin side. Yes. Now here, if we enlarge this little section on Putin... There's certain writing there that's written in reverse. And I think at that stage we also said that writing in reverse is an occult principle. Alistair Crowley taught the people to write backwards, walk backwards, talk backwards, all of those things. That's why Beatles and all, all of them recorded if you play their records backwards, there's actually meaning in yes, some of them. Yes, there's a, there's a subliminal there. And of course, they have Pinocchio, and his, his nose is relatively long, which means everything's based on lies. Yeah. But then they have Putin. They have the apocalypse associated directly with him, and we also discussed that then, and there was a reverse there, but never mind. But the writing over here is very interesting. In reverse, Putin's pipelines, plural. Yeah. What one. does that mean? Are they going to blow them up? Well, to bring about a time of trouble such as never was. Martin, we're living in interesting times. Let's say that that is for sure. The Bible says a time of trouble such as never was. Economically, environmentally, they're certainly helping with that. Oh, definitely. They have to reset, build back better, destroy what there was so that out of the ashes they can rise again. Now remember that relief that you have in the United Nations where the phoenix rises out of the ashes of a destroyed humanity? Mm. And uh, I have news for that phoenix because that phoenix represents Satan. Mm. He's going to be locked up in the bottomless pit. When the Lord Jesus comes, there will be a symbolic chain that binds him because he won't have anything to do except look that he's destroyed world. The build back better mm. will get to the destruction stage, but not to the building back stage. And we are, I believe, at this point in history, and may God help us to open our eyes and to realize where we are in the stream of time with regard to the abomination that causes desolation. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, history written in advance in the Word of God. Doctrines explaining the plan of salvation expounded by authors and prophets and all of it being laid aside for the sake of unity. Help us to cling to it is written, is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.